As a hobbyist solo indie dev, it's always inspiring to see the great successes of indie games made by a single person or a pair of people. Now, hey, although financial success is not everything, I do find it definitely helps with a bit of motivation. So here are a few of those hit indie games made by a single person or a couple of people. This is a continuation of my previous list, so definitely check that out as well if you haven't. Consider following me over at Twitter or Instagram and join our community Discord in the description below. This video is sponsored by Walling, but more on that in a bit. First up is Kenshi, developed in the beginning by Chris Hunt and Lo-Fi Games and released in 2013. According to their website, Kenshi is atmospherically considered a sword punk game, featuring a wide mix of RPG city building and sandbox elements. Notably saying, you are not the chosen one, you are not great and powerful, you don't have more hit points than everyone else, you are not the center of the universe, and you are not special unless you work for it. According to an Ask Me Anything post made by Chris on Reddit around 2019, he spent roughly the first six years working on Kenshi alone, with his sister writing most of the dialogue. All while he was working part-time two days a week as a security guard. Eventually, Kenshi got alpha-funded, and Hunt was able to build out a small team and ultimately found Lo-Fi Games, when they later fully released Kenshi. So far, Kenshi has sold over 1 million copies with an estimated revenue of $32 million. Up next is everyone's favorite dystopian immigration simulator, Papers, Please, developed by Lucas Pope and released in 2013. You take on the job of an immigration officer in the fictional country country of Aristoxa. You must review passports and other documents as your list of rules expands and different events occur. Papers, Please received numerous game nominations and was even named one of the top video games of 2013 by Wired and The New Yorker. There was even a short film adaptation of the game. Early on, Lucas Pope was involved in the modding community, specifically for the game Quake. He eventually also had his own studio, worked for Real Time Associates, Naughty Dog, and working on titles like Uncharted before working on Papers, Please. So far, Papers, Please has sold over 1.8 million copies, with an estimated revenue of almost $10 million. Geometry Dash is one of the most popular mobile games. Solo developed by Robert Robtop Topala, first released on iOS and Android in 2013. Geometry Dash is a difficult, fast-paced, music-synced platformer, featuring 21 pre-built levels and a very robust level creator. Topala originally got into game development while studying civil engineering in college, which he later dropped out of to found his own studio, Rob Top Games, in 2012. Topala said that in the beginning, there was no real direction for the game as it was just a cube that could crash and jump, but also said that he was inspired by the Impossible game. It remarkably only took Topala four months to develop and release Geometry Dash on the Android and iOS app stores. Geometry Dash has an estimated revenue of over $21 million. Not bad for initially only four months worth of development. For a fan favorite and now media stream giant, Five Nights at Freddy's or FNAF was originally developed by Scott Cawthon and released in 2014. Cawthon had previously worked on several games before Five Nights at Freddy's, with a few of them facing pretty harsh critique. Funny enough, his game Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. was criticized for having animatronic-like characters. Cawthon decided to lean into this negative view and create Five Nights at Freddy's, featuring animatronics. As the player, you are a nighttime security guard at Freddy's Fazbear's Pizza. At night, the animatronics come alive and hunt the player throughout the restaurant. It's your job to monitor them and survive. Because of the original Five Nights at Freddy's success, the game expanded to include three more main games, many spin-off games, a graphic novel series, and even a movie with a similar theme called Willy's Wonderland, featuring Nick Cage released in 2021, though that was not an official FNAF movie. Because of how many games and spin-offs there are, it's difficult to really put a number on how many copies the various games have sold, but the original Five Nights at Freddy's sold over 1 million copies just on Steam alone, with an estimated revenue of about $3.1 million. But also, Scott Cawthon has an approximate net worth of $70 million from the entire Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. Up next is the game Bright Memory, solo developed by Zhang Jiancheng and initially released on Steam in 2019. 
Bright Memory is a supernatural powered FPS where you play as Shayla on mission from the science research organization to prevent a military group from acquiring a weapon that can basically reanimate the dead. Zeng released a prior game called Warstorm and eventually took a position at CSUN Entertainment as a level designer before starting work on Bright Memory in his free time with Unreal Engine. He also eventually released an expansion game called Bright Memory Infinite in 2021. Bright Memory Episode 1, or the first game, has an estimated revenue of over $4 million, and Bright Memory Infinite has an estimated revenue of over $12 million. Lastly is the high-tech Metroidvania Axiom Verge, solo developed by Thomas Happ and originally released in 2015. You play as Trace, a scientist making their way through an ancient but oddly technological land. Thomas Happ was previously an engineer at Petroglyph Games that released some bangers like one of my personal favorite games, Star Wars Empire at War, but Axiom Verge was one of Thomas Happ's independent projects. Tom later worked on a new edition of the game called Axiom Verge Multiverse Edition, which was released in 2017. He now has his own game studio, rightly called Thomas Happ Games, and according to game stats, Axiom Verge has an estimated revenue of $1.7 million just on Steam. So that has been six more indie games developed by one or two people that hit astronomical success. Now again, focusing on the numbers and money isn't always productive, but can be somewhat inspirational to give you that little push to keep going. The games and indie developers featured in this video I actually found mostly through the comments of my previous video. So if you know of any other really popular solo indie developed games, please comment them down below and I'll do a little bit more research and maybe I'll put together another part three of this millionaires of solo indie game development. And if you want to try to get into game development, this video sponsor can help, Walling. I often find it hard to visualize all of the ideas I'm thinking about and how they interact and really what to prioritize. Walling is great for that because it's an extremely visual tool to help organize all your ideas and projects. And everything can be on a single wall so you don't have to go flipping through a notebook or a bunch of pages of a Word document or PowerPoint. You can put all of your game briefs, ideas, character information, quests, and even code blocks all on the same wall. Walling is also built with collaboration in mind, where you can invite your team to your wall to collaborate with you in real time and just communicate way more effectively. You can all add ideas, leave comments, and assign tasks to different team members, which is really essential for avoiding duplication of work, even if it's just working with one other person. Walling is also really visually appealing, clean, and simple, which definitely adds to its effectiveness as a productivity tool. And Walling has a new free plan that allows you to add unlimited blocks and use the app to organize and manage your projects for free. Visit walling.app to create a free account and start organizing your ideas and projects. Thank you to Walling for supporting the channel. Hey, thanks for sticking to the end. My name is Michael. We make college advice, career advice, game development, computer science tech type videos. If any of that does sound interesting, consider subscribing. Like this video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below any tips for game development videos that you might wanna see or game tips in general, game design tips. I'm still learning a lot, so I always appreciate any of the tips you guys leave me in the comments below. As I said, most of the games and indie developers on this list in this video, I got actually from the comments of the previous video, so if there are any other kind of hit indie games that I missed, please comment them down below. And again, maybe I'll make a follow-up video again. Thank you again to Walling for sponsoring the channel. And you can check out their links in the description below. Check out one of my past videos of my past self with Thank You Daily. And check out one of my future videos and my future self would also Thank You Daily. We do Bob British accents at the end of every video. We've been keeping it strong. Again, thank you for watching the video. And hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.